Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Very warm welcome to yet another episode of Coffee Table. If you talk globally, today's buzzword is climate change. To the highest global level, COPs, which is COP 21 and 22nd, in the UN General Assembly, and everywhere, to the district government and at the village level, this is very relevant. Pakistan is one of the countries which is very, very vulnerable to the climate change. Although Pakistan contributed least in uh, increasing the carbon footprint, but nonetheless, there need to be we need to mitigate that, and we need to. But before that, we need to know what are the impacts and what are the new set of rules and laws that should come in to take this challenge head on for ourselves and for future generations. We have today with us Romina Khushid Alam. She is a member of parliament from Gujranwala and very vocal on these issues. She is almost, I would not say every, but most of the caucuses, which I know she is the member. She is mover and shaker and she has been putting her energy at a place, which is the place to hit the nail at the top. Uh, Romina, very warm welcome. Thank what you. do you say about it? What are you doing? What is the role of parliament? <laughs> well, uh if you talk about the parliament and the role of the parliamentarian, yes, parliament is the basic, I think it's the only forum where we can do uh, so many things, uh, where we can do the legislation, we can do the oversight and then yes, we can go through with the oversight uh, on the implementation side as well. And if we talk about in the parliament, we are obviously having a great ministry and we have a very active minister of the climate you have change. Some caucus, yes, caucus. Uh, but that, and that, that is another thing. Uh, from the government side it is doing and then uh, we have uh, obviously the standing committee of the climate change in which we have a very young and uh, uh, enthusiastic sort of a, ch a chairman of the standing committee uh, and then uh, uh, if we talk about other things like we are doing uh, different uh, works on the uh, climate change and we have initiated uh, one green parliamentarian caucus in which we have different members from the parliament who are having the keen interest on uh, climate change and then we have SDG's uh, task force member as well from that as well we picked up few members of the parliament who are working on the climate change and then we have got this climate change caucus, uh, green parliamentarian caucus which we call. So in that we have the member of the parliament, we have uh, uh, from the provinces we have because you know sometimes when after the 18th amendment as we came across to know that uh, things has been dissolved so, so to bring everybody together to do some sort of action work to because now it's too much that we need to have more awareness and capacity building and grooming and this all thing so we are doing the things on that you're a lady how important this is that you should do all these things from a gender lens <laughs> what I don't feel like that do you think a so lady can't do work do you have feeling no, that I mean because the women are likely to suffer the most because okay. of the climate, in the climate change? In the climate change. Okay. Well, a woman, uh, because we are, as being a woman, we are trying more focus on the woman because if they, the, the basic thing that they should know about, they should have to have the awareness about the topic, about the subject, about the climate change, that what issues, what scenarios uh, and how they can be, because I think woman is the one who can play a very, very important role in the uh, current scenarios. And they are uh, suffering more. Yeah, and they are suffering more somehow because as you, we can say that maybe they don't know much so that is the reason they are suffering more because if we are going to also, come across when to know the families them, are yeah. split and men go for to find new opportunities, new opportunities and yes they are left alone to look after everything yeah. So I think so. if we go other way around so we are trying to make them more uh, strengthened in economical way as well and in awareness as well and in different other subjects we are trying uh, to bring them more uh, close uh, to awareness and on to the economical side as well. We are trying our level best on that. But if you ask that how they're suffering, so yes, they are because they don't know about their health, they don't know about how to suffer, how to survive. So they are going into the routine way, like if we talk about the malnutrition, which is a bit different, it's not relevant to the right now the subject. But I think they should uh, uh, know about what is going on in the current scenario for that we are trying to bring uh, come up with a different legislation as uh, if we talk, I talk about the women parliamentarian caucus and then if we talk about the YPF that is young parliamentarian forum so we are trying to reach towards more over to the woman in that sense uh, before we go into the details what is the gravity of the issue of the climate change what is it doing to Pakistan 
Well, I think Pakistan is the one who is not uh, suffering because of its own. There are so many other things like we are, I think we are the more, uh, most vulnerable as well that uh, due to some other countries surrounding by we are suffering as well. But uh, we need to like have to understand getting the realization of uh, the green sector especially about our land, about trees, about about green environment, I must say one. And then the other scenarios, if yes, like everybody knows that we are suffering, our biggest challenge is energy. We are we are having we are going towards the coal sector. We are going dealing with although we yes we have to have we got the reports as well on which it uh, shows that uh, it's very much safe. But still, there are so many other uh, things which from the surrounding which by uh, we are suffering a lot. From that, I think we are suffering a lot. Uh, is it leading to migration from rural to urban? Yes, it is because see uh, most of what the is people. The scale? Scale, uh, well, I'm so sorry, right now I don't have the perfect, okay. like, exact figures, so because I don't have the but perfect it's a, figures. It's, a, it's yes. a mammoth scale. Yeah, it is, because it's very obvious, because people are going more towards uh, uh, the, the urban areas, they're moving from rural to urban areas, because they feel like that they need to have more jobs, more opportunity, so they're going towards more, like, if we talk about the agriculture sector, I think where we are not that much going uh, in best way as we can go, or as we are having that capacity to go in so uh, that is a great number of people who are getting migrated towards from rural to urban sector right so here we take a break and after the break we'll come up with more issues and try to find out solutions on which the parliament is probably working over the uh, i mean currently and over the next few years please stay with us Diverse. It's original. It's SDTV. Welcome back. So, uh, I mean, the land area, Pakistan is overall suffering because of the climate change, the heat wave. But the area that produced cotton. They are yes. also suffering a lot because of the climate change, because of the heat wave and all. And as a result, the textile imports. So Pakistan is suffering economically as well. Uh, parliament, I understand the parliament must have been totally aware of that and doing something. Yeah, well, uh, I wanted to tell you uh, on that note <clears throat> that personally, I'm because I'm on the uh, standing committee of textile industries that the standing committee is playing a, because everybody knows that in in any country uh, the standing committees plays a role of INOs so in Pakistan uh, the parliament uh, which we are having a standing committee on textile and industries we are trying our level best to sort out the issues what are the issues why the things are happening where, where the downfall where they're getting problems why the cotton is getting into uh, 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 what are the drawbacks you can say so in that we are trying to meet towards those farmers those uh, business community the exporters importers whatever comes so so we are trying to reach over that and and uh, yes uh, sdpi is playing a great important role in that that because in different sectors we are trying to bring towards more, we are trying to gather um, the round table conferences and and ta table talks in which we are trying to know because as being a member of a parliament obviously I don't know the main issues so until unless we won't I won't reach towards them so in that we're trying to uh, ask them the question uh, the issues the scenarios and for that even we are trying to utilize more over the research centers the think tanks and the, the economical uh, you can say the think tanks which are working on economical way as well that how we can uh, bring the changes uh, in this issue of the cotton and uh, export and all that issues regarding come towards textile sector. Well, uh, are you doing something for, uh, I mean on the gender issue for the ladies because they are suffering more. <laughs> I have seen in a documentary that because of the unusual floods in Gilgit and Baltistan, uh, it was no more possible for the farmers to continue their farming on slopes, on terraces along the river mm. because their land was totally yeah, rendered useless. Come, yes. So they migrated to cities and yeah. that gave, uh, I yeah, mean, impulse and that started migration. And the women are left alone there. 
to look after the children and at times look for livelihood as well so women are suffering most so are you looking the climate change from the gender lens as well uh it's a gender lens yes of course because as we already know that a woman number of a woman is more rather than a male and obviously the suffering as you already mentioned in your comment that in your question or in your comment that how they're suffering more yes we are looking for it and we're trying to uh, focus on more over on the woman uh, uh, we're trying to promote with the woman entrepreneurship through different uh, programs like if we I'll talk about Pakistan Betul Mal in Pakistan Betul Mal there is a specific uh, department for women empowerment sector I'm honorary ambassador as well on that so in that as well we are trying to reach towards those areas as specifically like if you talk about gilgit if you talk about sawat because sawat is also suffering very much in towards that and so many other countries uh, sorry so many other cities as well so we are trying to uh, because we already know uh, everybody knows the issues the, how they are suffering livelihoods obviously they have to suffer they are uh, uh, their houses are suffering their kids are suffering for food for malnutrition and so many other things are going on so for that the government also taking they have taken initiative in the form of the benazir income support programs in which we are trying to promote their skills not only to promote their skills to make them more uh, uh, skilled as well if they want to learn skills so in that uh, note government has initiated different programs through pakistan betul mal and uh, by this uh, ba- pakistan benazir income support program so in that yes we are trying they are trying to help them out because they are do, are you doing right? something in your caucus or something women uh, caucus women caucus and, and or like the green caucus <coughs> Okay uh, if you talk I'll uh, come up with the uh, step wise if you talk about the women parliamentarian caucus so that I wanted to tell you that a women parliamentarian caucus every woman of the parliament is obviously the part of that women caucus and that is a cross party so when women are sitting over there on that uh, specific caucus so everybody talk about the issues of women rather it's a demos- domestic violence either it's economy issue uh, economy issue related things either it's uh, education either it's mal- whatever comes so so obviously uh, through climate change and in that i must appreciate the um, the efforts of the general secretary of the women parliamentarian caucus that she has gathered all and they all are uh, having this discussions and not only the discussions the issues the goals we have set how to uh, sort out the issues and on that note a uh, few months back like 2 3 4 months back we had a, a proper uh, conference international conference in which we invited uh, the pakistan parliamentarian women parliamentarian caucus they invited the women from women from the south asian region that because somehow and moreover the issues are same so that how we can cope up how we can learn from each other so that we are doing and then if you talk about the green parliamentarian caucus in that yes we are trying to come first of all we are uh, in that we everybody is open to like they are uh, easily they can talk they can express that what issues they are suffering from their people are suffering from because you know the member of the parliament is a person who comes up from the they are the voices of the public they are because of pu- public they are by the public and because of them so i think they are the ones who know more over the issues of the people so uh, in that caucus we are trying to uh, sit together and we are trying to design the issues or like especially if I, i my preference is if you ask that is water that how we can go through with the issues of um, current scenario in which especially about the gender uh, as you talk about the women and what are the solutions for that we have requested we we have made a team of a people uh, though i have a few of them like two three people they have already done their phd's in the climate change in different sectors so we have requested them to come and like we can sit together so in that note we can uh, come up with some sort of a legislation uh, not only the legislation that how we can do the easy implementation and how we can get the reach towards the rural area how we can bring the changes how we can utilize that land either if it's in the slope form about what are the uh, things we can uh, bring towards uh, to that area so the green parliamentarian caucus is working very actively uh, on that uh, note and especially and specifically on the climate change right a research study recently completed research study suggest that uh, textile policy in pakistan need into account the changes that the changing climate is bringing in uh, are you doing something to uh, i mean improve the policy from that end <coughs> Well um I would like to tell you that the Green Parliamentarian Caucus 
uh, we are very much attached with mm. the think tank because you know it is not possible that uh, if you don't go through with the help of any think tank any analysis any data so for any sort of a legislation any sort of a policy if you want to bring or if any sort of a change you want to bring you have to have the assistance along of some think tank or what so with on that sdpi is helping us the green parliamentary caucus and in that we are trying to get the uh, maximum number of uh, uh, facilitation you can say from their side on which we are trying to come up with the legislation and we are assisting we are providing the suggestions towards the ministry either it's a ministry of textile either it's a ministry of uh, climate change and not only that we are trying to cope up or uh, to uh, um, listen towards the different organization who are working and what are basic uh, we are trying to achieve or trying to bring together because you know everyone different people are working on the different scenarios but their work is being scattered so what we are trying to do or trying to manage that in through this green parliamentarian caucus that we should bring this uh, scattered uh, work together and that we should come up with the proper solution and a work plan that according to that work plan we can work in a proper way and the population that is coming from villages to the cities cities that is again a big challenge and i must say that without because the because of climate change yes because of the climate change it's a very big challenge and i must say that the provinces uh, they should have to be very much active and they have to have uh, uh, like now it's a very big alarming situation in in which they have to uh cater it uh, on a proper way and a proper time because if we're not going to uh, make the things happening today they're going to become a very big challenge uh, in the coming right. future so for that for tomorrow yes and for that note uh, the the provinces they that is the why we we come up with this caucus so that we can get to know we should coordinate with each other because it's a drawback that in somehow in pakistan the urgent things the important things uh, always gone covered by uh, somehow or overtake by the urgent things so important things always been you know the urgent comes up and they just got the place so we are trying our level best that this importance of the things should be there and we should know that rather than that we going to cry in the coming future so it's more important that we should focus on right now what this issues and how we can easily handle it uh, because already it's very alarming mm. all right so here we take another break and after the break we will try to form up some sort of conclusion and the way forward and what sort of support that the parliament itself needs to form up the policies please stay with us diverse it's original it's sdtv welcome back uh, do you think that parliament or your caucus the special committees on climate because these are technical subjects and very social in their nature as well economic i mean it's the cross cutting mm -hmm. do you think you think tanks and research organizations can help you and what sort of help they can give you well if you talk about obviously parliament uh, is the basic forum Pol parliament is the place where the solutions should come up the policy should come up but if we talk about the think tanks and the, the organizations they can play a key role they can support parliament in a way that they can come up with the suggestions there so like issues the like the data analysis and the issues like if you talk about only you talk about the migration uh, still i think we are not having a exact number that how many number of people are coming towards from uh, rural to urban so i think think tanks and the inst these institutions can play an important role uh, by providing like which sort of legislation is required what are the solutions to do need to get into the policy uh and then uh, um, so many other things that how we can make an impact on the economy side how we can develop uh, the the women uh, sector how we can promote them how we can help them into uh, come up as a uh, as a strong not only a strong woman in the financial economical way like you know so i think uh, these organization public sector and the think tanks can play a key role towards that and in in this uh, caucus if we said uh, i think they are already uh, we are blessed enough that we got a good number of uh, organizations who are helping us and uh, very soon the good uh, sort of positive sort of uh, policies are coming towards right 
so a uh, one last question before we come to what is the way forward do you think well way forward if you talk uh, if you ask from me i i i really want that we should promote the green plantation we should make it a criminal offense that if somebody is cutting the trees we should have to aware the people of uh, like on the small things as well and make it in towards which we are already trying that this uh, academia we have to involve academia not from the higher level from the primary level we should like it is has to be into the curriculums of the students that of the children, young students that they should know the importance of the climate change that how we can save the water how we should use our small resources and more over the recycling uh, and how we have to handle our trash how we can you know uh, figure out first of all our issues and how we can because you know i believe that where there are issues there are the solutions and solutions are always hidden in the issues so i think we have to have an eye open open eyes and open brains to how we can uh, figure out those issues uh, from those solutions and uh, yes policies are there i i must say the pakistan is the country who is always very rich in the uh, in the policies um and poor on implementation <coughs> uh, yes poor on impl implementation so i think we need to have more implementation and little bit individual uh, individual uh, that uh, uh, must i must say that individual feeling to do something so we are suffering responsibility from, uh, hamlet phobia <laughs> you can say that okay so thank you very much <laughs> for uh, giving time and participating in this very important program thank which you. is very academic in nature as well so with this we come to the end of the program next time next topic new guests keep watching our programs